I've been using this Xtool S1 laser engraver for about six months now, something like that. So I wanna go over kind of what it's been like, the different parts that we have, what have we been using it for, and is getting a laser engraver like this even worth it? So first of all, what do we have here? So this is the S1 X201. We have the 40 watt diode laser on it. We have the riser unit, the air assist. We have the air filter system, and this is a pretty new addition. Honeycomb unit, which I use whenever I cut anything on it. The reason why it's not in there right now is because I have the rotary. There's a chuck and there's also rollers. And this of course is for turning round, not turning, but engraving round things. For example, cups, mugs, that kind of thing. Um, Xtool sent me this unit. They are not, however, sponsoring this video or anything. They have no input as to what I'm saying. Uh, so I do want to you know, share what I think and you know, think really works and what I think maybe it's not quite worth it. If you are debating about whether to pick up a unit like this um, I have a link in the description below which is an affiliate link which means I would get a small percentage of the sale um, and I would just go towards you know supporting the channel and I would really appreciate it this is not our first laser engraver. We previously had one of these open models um, and then tried various contraptions to create a cover. So one of the things that I really appreciate about this unit is that it has this cover. It keeps the dust and the smoke inside um, and it also protects against the light. So anybody can walk in and anybody can you know, be present when you're cutting things, which may not seem like a big deal at first, but as you start using the machine and you want to keep going a lot it, it makes a big difference if you don't have to be so careful and um, there's also an air assist in here and a fan which means that when you have the machine running um, it will just suck the air out now there are various ways to dispose of these gases you can either put the hose right out the window or we have put it you know right open up the garage door and have a big hose that just funnels it out and it works pretty good in the sense that it just like psh, all, the, all the smoke comes out I recently got their smoke purifier let's check that out so to the smoke air purifier I was kind of excited to get this because dealing with smoke and, and, and dust and things like that is kind of a big deal and not everybody have like a workshop with uh, dust collection systems or, or even the option to funnel the smoke outside so this machine right here I would highly recommend if you are using the uh, the engraver inside your home inside an apartment where maybe you don't want to just throw the air outside. I mean, the one thing, if you are throwing the air outside, you are throwing your conditioned air, so your air conditioned or your heated air outside, so you're losing some energy in that sense. This is self-contained, okay? So there's a bunch of filters inside here. And over time, you have to replace the filters. And I would say that's kind of the, uh, maybe the negative point about a system like this, um, the fact that you have to replace the filters. And of course, this is a proprietary system, so you have to get their filters. And if you are using this machine quite heavily, um, getting these additional filters, you know, will add up over time. You might, you know, spend a couple of hundred dollars more in a year just getting filters but it is pretty quiet I think it's under like 55 decibels something like that and when the machine is running and you barely notice it um, and it seems to be working really well so if you're somewhere you don't have access to a window um, or you just want to you know have a contained system it's kind of a nice idea However, I think depends on your situation because like for us, for example, where this is not something we really need, it was kind of cool to test out, but then I don't think it would be worth it. I mean, another option that someone could look into would be to just get an inline fan, you know, a six or four, eight inch inline fan that you would put in your window and then, you know, suck um, the smoke out using the, the hose that way. And that would be a much cheaper option. But you can see as you open up this, and uh, we have been using this machine, this, this filter now for what, a couple of weeks and not very heavy use. And it is already, you know, showing signs of wear. And not to the point where you have to replace the filters. Um, but I can imagine if, if you use this heavily, especially if you cut all the way through, if you do a lot of, you know, heavy cuts, the filters are gonna clog up relatively quickly. So we have the laser engraver right here on a stove.
storage table and it has a drawer right here. And it's kind of nice because it you know, makes everything very accessible. One of my favorite tools uh, to have when you're, uh, once you've cut things out, especially once you, you know, haven't engraved, but you've cut out small parts and they're really tiny, it's these little tweezers. So you can kind of pick them up without disturbing anything if you need to, you know, engrave more, cut more pieces out. And we also have just like a ton of like little cutoffs in here. Here we have the clamps. These are the magnetic clamps that you they come with a honeycomb panel and they're kind of nice. Uh, they're very strong and, and they work quite well. Now, what material you are using is kind of something to think about before getting a laser. So personally, I like to use Baltic birch plywood, uh, really thin plywood for a lot of projects. So use eighth inch, quarter inch and you know half inch as well to some degree but a lot of eighth inch and some quarter inch plywood so if you're thinking about getting a machine like this think about what kind of material you're getting because oftentimes you actually need additional tools in order to deal with those other materials I mean for example you can't go to Home Depot or Lowe's and pick up Baltic birch plywood and Baltic birch is that really fine nice plywood is super crisp and clean really high quality you have to go to a specialty store to get that um, and then you need like a table saw or, or at least a, a circular saw to break that up into small pieces. So what's the capacity of this machine here? Now, now I have the riser block right here. This is not a necessary, this is an upgrade. However, if you are using the rotary, you want to spin and engrave things, you do need the riser block. And the riser block basically just lifts everything up and gives you more space so that you can engrave thicker things. It also gives you this option. You can, I mean, this opens up on the other side as well. So if you had a really long piece, you know, there's an unlimited, you can just, you know, have a piece go right through which is kind of a nice option we have about 24 inches to work with and then unlimited if we open up the riser blocks but other if we keep it keep it still we have about 18 inches and then in terms of height with the riser blocks we are at about four four and a half inches something like that of course for the most part if you're cutting just like flat things that is plenty of space but something to think about that you do need this riser block if you are interested in the rotary attachment. So what do you use the machine for? Obviously, there's a difference whether you are actually engraving or you are cutting through. Now, we use this machine a lot for cutting out parts. So we cut through the wood all the way through. And if anybody is interested, these are the settings that we have found works really well. If I'm cutting out 1 8 material, then I like to do two passes at 100% at 16 millimeters per second. If I'm cutting quarter inch material, then I like to do two passes at 100% at 12 millimeters per second. Once you get to be thicker at a quarter inch, it starts to become a little bit more annoying. So if I'm doing um, like half inch material, then I like to do three to four passes. But however, I like lower the focal point after like two passes or like in between that to bring it down further. Um, and then do 100% at 12 millimeters per second. We have cut solid wood on here, cut oak, cut pine, um, and up to like half inch you can do that and it's fine. However, if you get any thicker than that, it doesn't really work because the, the hole, the cut gets full of soot and it gets clogged and then it, yeah, I haven't really been able to get cut really thick material but that's not really where this machine excels it really works to cut thinner material and then of course to engrave and make signs and things like that this comes with the xtool software um, and for the most part you can design some basic things in the software but not more complicated things so for the most part what we do is use like vectric by aspire um, or any program like that to create SVG files and then import them into the Xtool program. It's very easy to import uh, SVG files. Apparently you're supposed to be able to use Lightburn with this, but I haven't been able to get that to work. And also the Xtool software works well with the machine in terms of, of, of setting it up and framing. And there's a lot of neat features that work really well with the software. So I think it works great for that. Maybe not design up to you know a certain point like you can write letters and you can make basic shapes and things like that there's also an AI tool that you can use if you're interested I haven't really played with it too much but you can actually use an AI tool to create different designs in the program and then you know cut it directly so there's a lot of design options that are really quick and easy um, and of course unique if you use the AI tool so just for fun we tried out the rotary attachment and engraved a bunch of mugs 
The rotor attachment comes with rollers as well as a chuck. So there are two ways to attach something round on here. For the most part, we've been using the rollers, which seem to work great. Um, especially engraving these straight round mugs. It's pretty easy to work the software in terms of engraving something around. You just have to think a little backwards and then flip the, the word around in order to get it to print right. Again, while doing this, I was glad we had the enclosure in the fan because the type of metal and paint that comes off when you are engraving this type of thing, it's not something that you want to breathe in either. And then the question becomes, is a laser engraver worth it? And the thing is, I think this is a really cool machine. I think it opens up a lot of doors. You can, you can do so many things and it's quite easy, especially if you compare to other machines. Like if you compare this to our CNC machine, which is a great machine, this is much easier to use for like smaller, precise work. You're not gonna break bits. You don't have to secure the material as much. And many things, if this does better than the CNC machine, especially when it comes to smaller things and just the speed and the setup. Now, one of the main things to consider if you are thinking about getting a machine like this is definitely the safety aspect. Our first machine did not have a cover and it becomes smoky and you just cannot deal with it. You cannot even deal with it in a workshop that's designated to just be a workspace, never mind inside your home. So having a cover I think it is a huge deal in order to actually have a useful situation going in that's more healthy for you. So from a safety point of view, I think this is a great model. Um, it looks very sleek. I like the air purifier machine and if I was using it, especially like if I was using it inside a school, a makerspace, something like that, where it's a contained situation or you know if you are in an apartment or just in a space where you don't really have access to a window or whatever, I think it's also, it's perfect. However, for us, um, I don't think it's worth it for this situation, especially considering you are going to go through filters and it is going to add up in terms of cost over time. So what we are using mostly is the, um, the dust collector, which I think is definitely is overkill. What I want to do is get an inline fan and use that to funnel it out because it wouldn't be as loud as using the dust collector each time you want to do a cut and it would be very effective. And then of course, okay, we have these various additions. Rotary tool, cool if you want to engrave mud and things like that but you know if you'd like us cutting out parts making boxes things like that I mean fun but not necessary uh, air assist definitely a nice feature um, yeah we definitely get that the honeycomb works well there's a tray that comes with the machine that you can bolt down if you want to have it secure now we remove that to use the rotary attachment the 40 watt diode laser our previous laser was 20 watts, this is 40 watts. So what does that mean? I mean, that just means this is quicker to use. The cut is more effective. Um, however, in the end, it's doing the same thing. This might, just might be a little quicker doing it here, but it's so quick in general. So unless you're doing like production work, I'm not sure if it's even worth it. So I wouldn't be necessarily like set on 40 watts. I would be fine with 20 watts. I mean, if it takes two minutes or four minutes, it's really not a big deal. And the thing is, um, while something like this is not cheap, especially if you bundle everything together and you get all of these different features, there are um, lower end models, earlier models that have come down in price a lot. So the whole market has just come down in price a lot. So these machines are quite accessible. However, if I were to get one without a cover, I would definitely try to think about something and we did you know, play with that. And there are different options out there just to protect your eyes from the light and try to capture that smoke and the dust because you don't want to breathe that stuff in and you don't want your family to breathe that stuff in either. In terms of what we have used the machine for, I mean, primarily cutting and engraving plywood. I would say that's the biggest thing making very intricate small boxes um, for our screwdrivers that we sell and for our spinning tops. We you know, have designed these really interesting boxes that have a hinge system and I love them. Um, so it's kind of cool to be able to create product. Um, like this is part of our shop. So it's like a packaging system or like a keepsake box system that goes with the product. So really cool from that perspective. Um, then we've also used it to create like little electronics projects like the signaling box, the, uh, the predator birthday clock. Um, and again, here you can just design things perfectly so that you have where your buttons should be or your holes for your microphone or for your fan or, um, and also 
we created this small little wedge system for the boxes to come together that you can take the box apart and open and close it back together again uh, if you want access to the electronics. And those tiny little wedges, I mean, easy to create on here. So that works really, really well. And then also we're just working on a bunch of various kind of gear contraptions and little cars and little models and uh, model houses. So just like a lot of stuff cut out of plywood. And also like signs made like a, a spaceship like control panel for my son's house. But also just for fun we have played around with engraving the back of spoons. Um, so cur like engraving curved things which worked really well and got a nice and, and also engraving like chisels so steel um, that worked well have you tried to engrave leather I mean I haven't really played with that too much could do that more especially if you want to make like labels tags that kind of thing and then of course the rotor in terms of the cups if you want to get into laser engraving I'm not sure you need to go this high end right off the bat but just from a safety point of view, it is very nice. If I were to put this, or if I was to put a laser engraver in my house, I would definitely pick this model just because of the cover. And then I would want to get the, uh, the filter as well. Just know that you are going to need to replace those filters. But such a fun machine and it's very user friendly. It was very easy um, and quick to set up. The software works great. And then there are a lot of different features like the autofocus, which works great on this unit, um, as well as you can map out an area that you want to cut on and, and lots of things like that that just makes it really easy um, to utilize it. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Don't forget I have an affiliate link in the description. If you are interested, you can check out that um, if you want to get your own machine. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you soon.